everybody it's Dean welcome back so as you saw in I think the last video I gave you guys an update of the garage status and I had talked about that I found what I thought was a nice Sony Trinitron CRT TV I can use for gaming and sadly it was broken so uh, I haven't been really looking for it on the TV but I have a TV that kind of found me I guess you can say uh, from the side of the road we have another CRT TV So as you can see, this is a later CRT TV that I found. The screen is of the very, very flat variety. There's no bulge to this TV at all. Um, the sign on it is it's pretty illegible in the camera, but honestly, even in person, it's you, you can't really read it. Um, the words free and the words works are on here. So just, just, just take that for what it is. Um, looking at the TV, uh, I didn't measure it yet. I'm guessing this is a, probably a 21 inch, maybe a 19, uh, you know, measured diagonally TV. Um, no brand name on it, but I looked at the back and it is a Panasonic. So this TV is a model PV20DF62. So if I had to guess the, the 20 at the beginning, it probably means it's a 20 inch TV. Now, as you can see right here, this has a built-in DVD player. It's the pop-out drawer type, which are pretty common. So little flaps right here and the drawer comes out. Hopefully that works too. Maybe the note that says it works means it all works. And it has an array of controls in the front. As you can see, the little badge is missing that would say Panasonic on it. So we'll have to see what we can do about that. Uh, looking at the front ports here, um, pretty decently uh, arrayed in the front here. So we have a headphone jack, I'm assuming output of course, a video in two, and audio left and right. So we have stereo composite. We also have S video right here, which is pretty nice. Our power button, volume, channel, and then we have the transport controls for the DVD, the play, the skip, the, you know, skip both directions, the open close, uh, I thought this was a, a jack at first, but no, that's actually just the remote sensor. And then we have three, looks like lights, angle, on timer, and sleep timer. So guessing the three of these, on obviously means you put it on at a certain time. Sleep is a sleep timer, goes off at a certain time. And angle is interesting. I've never seen an angle light on a TV. I'm guessing that's like the aspect of the TV. I mean, it's a, it's a four by three screen, but depending if this is maybe 480i, maybe it adjusts to like the DVD's aspect ratio, like a wide or a stretch or something. Figure something like that. Looking at it, I mean, it's definitely a, a, a late, you know, early 2000s TV. No, not late 90s. So it's, it's this gray color that they all were at that time before they stopped making CRTs. Uh, this one looks like it has paint specs on it, which is pretty typical. You know, TV's hard to move from a room when you're painting it, so you just leave the TV in there and you splatter white paint on it. Or it's in a basement. Turn in the TV. There is a Dunkin' Donuts sticker on the right side. Um, funny enough, I actually look at this as a good indicator. These stickers are, I would say, within the past five years for Dunkin' Donuts. So this TV being made, I think, 2002 or 2004. The fact that it has a newer sticker like that on here means that the TV was in use for up until probably recently. Uh, spinning it further, as you can see, it's not its not too deep for a CRT. I feel like a lot of the Sonys and whatnot would have a little more bulge right here, and it's not quite there. Uh, we'll spin it around just a little more. And now we can get a good look at the back. So we have, yep, yeah, okay, yep, yeah, May 2002 as the build date. There's the full model number again, PV20DF62. Serial number right there. And going towards the bottom ports over here. Coaxial in for the VHF, UHF, you know, cable or antenna type input. S video inputs. And then audio outputs, including optical. And one thing I do notice about this TV, uh, compared to almost every CRT, there's no little spot to stick the rabbit ears in. I mean, even the newer CRT TVs, because they have an antenna tuner in them, always had a spot to kind of stick those rabbit ears in, but not on this model. And I'm guessing these hooks apply to wrap the cord up. All right, so that's that. 
So I'm gonna spin this guy back around, we'll power it up and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does power up. The power cord is a little bent. So this obviously isn't, you know, that bad of a deal. Just a little straighten that out just a little. This one's actually not that bad at all. It's just this one's a little crappy. Just kind of take this and give it a twist right near the tip and straighten it out. Here we go. There we go. That's, you know, it's not perfect, but honestly, it's better than what it was. You don't want to break the socket it goes into. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if it works. It is plugged in. I hear clicking, I hear the tube doing things. And ooh, look at that. It says the channel. It's got a picture. Very nice. So as usual, um, any waving you see on here is because of the uh, the, the scanning, well, not the scanning, the frame rate between the cameras and the screen. I don't see any um, lines going up. So, okay, it works. It's not making any weird noises, it looks, blue which is typical you know a lot of these newer tvs you don't see snow on them one thing i did uh notice on here is there's a little badge up here that says tau i'm assuming it's 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 tau t-a-u and i guess that's uh panasonic's little branding they did on these um i googled it to see and if i got some different posts and one that pops up and I feel like every time I look up a, a specific brand name, I, this comes across, but um, apparently the same same deal. So uh, on JVCs, it, it's called iArt. Um, it's some technology they use for like the whole, um, the same thing that Trinitron uses when it's like a, a shadow mask in front of here um, or a small aperture grill, whatever it's called, I forget, just uh, comment below. And I guess, same story with this, people supposedly Sony's uh, trademark or uh, copyright or whatever, uh, patent, there we go, uh, on Trinitron expired so the other companies can make their own under their own names. So apparently this Tau, if I'm saying that correctly, is what Panasonic called their whole uh, aperture grill thing in front of it. I don't know if that's for sure. Um, but, you know, I feel like whenever you Google something about a brand name, it's compared to Trinitron, which uh, is respectable. It is like, you know, pretty much the best. But anyway, look at that. It works. So let's, um, let's see. So no remote came with this. So uh, I went ahead and I programmed a universal to, to get it to work. So we'll just see if it, if I put the right code in. Oh, it did, okay. So there we go. So I have channels. I have volume. Looks good. Nothing, no shakiness or anything like that. That looks, that looks good. Uh, input. Let me switch the TV. Okay, input. There we go. Line one, line two, and back to uh, things. So I think. Let me see. Uh, line two looks like it's the front jacks. Line one is the back. So I don't have a TV source to plug in here. So. Let's see, DVD or Jack, let's do DVD. Okay, so let's open the DVD tray. Nope. Hmm. All right, let's try that again. Hold on, I'm gonna put, I wonder if I hit play, will it? Okay, so there we go, no disc. Okay, so let's try that again. Uh oh, that's not good. All right, so I don't know if you can hear that. When I'm hitting open close, it sounds like the drawer is trying to open, but not quite it's stuck, I guess. Let's see if we can get it unstuck. Okay, I can see it oh so moving a little bit in there. It's, it's trying to open. Well, you know what? The TV was free. No, it's getting stuck somewhere. Just hoping we could shake it loose. Oh, there they go. Hey, hello. All right, we shook the tray loose. Hopefully it will open back up again later. So uh, let's try a movie. See what we get. Hopefully my disc doesn't get stuck in there. However, will I test more TVs and DVD players? Okay, it says play. 
Hey, it's playing. You know, I gotta say, I always, and I had this with the other, um, the Sylvania TV I used to have, the, the clarity of a DVD built into a CRT TV is, is just gorgeous. It looks perfect. So it's playing. So let's see if we could do select. No, select doesn't work. Okay. Sometimes with the universals, um, the playback functions don't all work, but usually the play button does. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and do a skippy skip. All right, it works. I know I can't play too much because of, you know, infringement and whatnot, but hey, look at that. It works. Okay. I wonder if I get my disc back out. I don't know. Oh no, my disc is stuck. Oh no, it's not. It's back, okay. All right, no more chances with the disc. We'll, we'll leave it out for now. You know, I wanna say I'd fix that, but how am I really gonna get that out of there? Actually, you know what? Looking at this, it's hard to see. Maybe from this side or from this side. It looks like this little panel can come off. Maybe not. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with that right now. All right, so now we know the DVD works, except for the tray that's kind of finicky. Now we'll check out and see if we can get into the menu with the universal remote. We can. <laughs> Sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes the TVs want their own remote for that. Um, but here, so functionality-wise, DVD, lock options, language, channel, clock, and TV. All right, that's, that's it. All right, so Let's just check them one by one. I don't know what would be in the DVD menu. So let's see. Oh, okay, just, it literally is the DVD menu. <laughs> All right, this language is input, TV mode. I guess you can adjust the, oh, okay. You can put pan and scan or letterbox. I guess it moves it by itself. I'm not sure. Okay, well, regardless. Let's see if we can hop back out. There we go. Looks like the menu button is also the end button. So, locking, I'm assuming, is just, yeah, that's fine. We don't need to lock the TV. Languages, I went in the wrong menu. Wrong button. Hola. <laughs> All right. Channels. All right, so antenna cable. All right, channel caption, weak signal display, on or off. That, that's fine. There's not a whole lot in here. It has the auto setup. I'm not going to run that now because that probably takes a few minutes. See what else we got in here. All right, TV modes. Caption, uh, input select again, F, FM antenna. Okay. Interior, exterior. Okay, so apparently this TV has a FM receiver built in. I don't know how we can access that. That's pretty cool. But unfortunately, I went through all the inputs and uh, FM mode wasn't on there. So I guess maybe that's something you need the real remote for. That's unfortunate. But that's that's neat though. Let's see, remote warning. I don't know what that's for. Maybe a little battery? I'm not sure. And DVD volume adjust plus two. So it bumps the DVD's volume up too when you're playing DVDs. That's cool. All right, that's, that's it. That's what we got in here, I guess. Oh, and our clock settings. We can, yep. So auto clock's not gonna work because I think it gets that signal from the antenna or the cable signal. And since neither's hooked up, it's not gonna get the clock settings. So a whole lot of nothing on there. All right, so you know what? Let's do this. Input work, right? All right, so we're gonna switch it to line one. I'm gonna hook up the PlayStation and we'll see what kind of picture we get from the PlayStation. All right, so for testing purposes, we have Jet Moto 2. Sit that right there. I guess this is also a good test on my PlayStation because I didn't pack it too well when I moved. But look at it. It makes the noise. I think it works. And it read the disc. So read the disc. It reads, it's reading the disc. I can't speak right today, apparently. Here it is. All right, I can hear it. I can see it. This game is Analog compatible, so we'll put the analog on. All right, Jet Moto 2. 
We're just gonna see if we can play it. <laughs> Look at the guy leaning back and forth. Look at him losing already. Oh, I'm so bad at this game. So, despite the pixelated graphics, as you can see, it still looks really good. The colors are popping on this TV. It looks really awesome. The dark spots are dark. They're not too dark. I can still see the dirt versus the water. Everything looks really good. So this, you know, honestly, for uh, free TV, works pretty good. Um, I'm really digging this one. So hopefully it stays working. I think I want to keep this one around. All right, so we know the games work on it. This TV is working good. It needs one more thing. It's missing that badge. I feel really bad it's missing a badge. So you know, we can fix that. I know a Panasonic's when I see one. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed this look at this uh, 20 inch Panasonic Tau TV. Works good, nice picture on it. No complaints. Uh, and I think this will be the new uh, CRT game TV for the game room or game garage or whatever we're doing in here. All right, guys, appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.